we are almost four days on the way and we had a really nice beginning with almost no waves and low winds and then because of that we could all ease into the sailing rhythm again and find our sea legs and none of us have, has gotten seasick at all and probably it's not gonna happen in the future too because if you've survived the f f like the three first days it's mostly over only Genoa off the downwind pole perfect wind from the back the waves from the back pretty nice sailing five to six knots most of the time we get the fishing line out maybe we'll catch something but we're kind of too fast right now to catch anything we saw some turtles really really happy to be on this boat with this crew it's, it's just amazing could be better and then the destination martinique oh my god i'm so excited but sailing is kind of like camping <laughs> you have a you hold your your number two in the toilet longer and right now i'm i haven't been to the toilet for four days so <laughs> So it's kind of like, oh shit, <laughs> need to go to the toilet. So drinking a lot of coffee to try to go to the toilet. And I think today, today might be the, the day that I'm able. I'm probably gonna destroy the toilet with my German brick. So, <laughs> yeah, that's also kind of the sailing things that you might not see or know when you're never sailed before. But then usually after the first big ship, it's like every day or every second day again. Like the normal routine. These three kilos lighter. Success! Yes. Woo! 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 And then just as I was starting to shit, the toilet seat slapped my ass from the back. <laughs> We're scaring the poop out of you. Uh... <laughs> Pooping! Yeah! yeah! <laughs> it was this beautiful and calm sunset that we yeah. sailed awesome. into. Everyone in a happy and relaxed mood because of the very pleasant and light downwind sailing conditions. I was just going down to pick out a new book to read when suddenly... Followed by a WHAT THE FUCK from Idun behind the helm. I turned around shocked when I saw through the window that the sails were swimming in the water. This sight was so unbelievable that I thought for a second that this must be a dream. Okay, we just lost our mast. When your mast breaks at sea and you are lucky to not get hit by anything of the rig, the biggest danger is the mast punching a hole into your hull. I'm gonna check if we have some water intake. I rush down to check the bilge if there is any water coming in. Already activated the EPIRB. Now we're going to go for the satellite phone. but it seemed to be dry. Now it was almost dark. Okay, what's the plan? The plan is to winch. I think we're gonna try to get to the back of the right? Yeah. 
first we try to salvage something from the rig. Just tell me what you need. Okay, it's cut. Come here. Wait a second. Okay. Fuck. One second. soon realized that it's not possible. I will keep it on. If this punches a hole in the hull, we're sinking. Yeah. So and maybe we should just drop it. Should we just drop it and motor to get better? I think that's better. It's just you know guys it's a huge risk that someone gets injured if we pull it on board. Then the battery of my camera died. By now the mast was hanging vertically next to the boat and each wave made it bang onto the hull. Now you have to cut away the rest of the rig to let the mast sink so that the banging cannot do any more damage to the hull that ensures our survival. We took a sharp knife and cut all the ropes attaching the mast to the boat while Edon was already using a metal saw to cut the remaining stays. She got exhausted after a while and I took over the sawing. I will never ever forget how I was sawing as fast as I could on this boat somewhere far in the ocean. And it felt so weird to destroy something as fast as possible that you normally take the very very best care of. And finally with the last stay being removed, the whole rig could sink away. Suddenly, there was silence. It was very weird to see the boat without the mast. Fortunately, the motor was working like always and with enough diesel on board to run it for about six days straight, we had the options of either trying to motor to Cap Verde or back to the Canary Islands. Would the mast have broke some days later in the middle of the Atlantic? This would have left us hopelessly adrift without any land in reach of our motor. Well, the timing actually pretty good we had some lights we were managed to do that is there something hanging up the back is the lines anything no. hanging up the back no. like this all right guys well this is exciting never I would have expected this yep yeah. a bit too exciting, a bit I, too was, exciting. I was on my way to the bed yeah I yeah know. now you're awake again and no headache yeah i have no headache <laughs> now <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> best painkiller ever yeah after a while we decided to try to motor back to the Canary Islands against the wind and against the waves. Now we had no sails anymore to stabilize the boat and this turned out to be an extremely uncomfortable washing machine like ride. Every movement becomes a huge chore. To brush your teeth or to go to the toilet you constantly have to fight a lot of g-forces and lock yourself on the toilet seat like you would be riding a roller coaster after you managed to do your watch
and to eat a cold canned chili con carne you fall exhausted into your bunk with the screaming engine right next to you singing you into your sleep so it's the second night of motoring back to the Canaries El Hierro um, we're all really exhausted from this horrible movement of the boat going up the waves we're so glad that we have an autopilot because without it would be just horrible to steer all the way and it's going to take another 48 hours at least these days were really exhausting and we were all really sad about the severe damage that this beautiful floating home that Idun and Astrid worked so hard for had suffered. But we also knew that on the bright side no one got hurt and that we still have a huge amount of chocolate. Sometimes there were tears. Really? Picking the locks where they, <laughs> where they kept all their empty uh, soda bottles. And sometimes we could oh. laugh again. <laughs> what are you doing there? Well, <laughs> I'm pre preparing oh, can't to stand. make a letter in a bottle that we're gonna throw overboard. But I needed to put the rum somewhere first. <laughs> So it gets the less luxurious bottle. It smells very nice like rum here. Yeah, I didn't drink it as well. <laughs> yes, this is the letter we prepared. I really hope someone finds this bottle. Me too. And they should call us definitely. Like yeah. even if they don't find our rigging or a mast. Just want to talk to them. Yeah, it's just the pretext for putting the number there. Yeah. Maybe we're like 50 years old or something, you know. It was so much fun. <laughs> oh, I don't remember this. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> oh, no, but that time I was crossing the Atlantic with my rigging broke. Yes, <laughs> I remember now. I see, you found my letter. This was the first time I rigging broke. <laughs> oh, yes. That was the first time, yes, yes. You know, the second time we actually didn't make it. We had to be rescued by a cargo ship. Yeah. And those cargo men were not nice. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Let's get that bottle overboard. Yeah. Good luck, bottle. Fair winds. Hope your mask don't break. <laughs> Did it sink? No. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that would <one's> suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... Uh, Oh, okay. <laughs> but it didn't sink. I taped the cap real tight. Good. Many, many times. I have not showed stuck in my. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just woke up with someone screaming dolphins. So let's see. Then suddenly hundreds of dolphins came. Finally, with a lot of relief, we could see land. The tiny and sparsely populated island called El Hierro was the closest to us. It was very weird to go back to land and to see people, cars and houses. Oh, so right now I'm in the toilet of the marina office. I'm so glad that we escaped the washing machine movement and our safe land again after this crazy adventure. No one is hurt, no one is dead, only a broken boat, which is really sad. Makes you appreciate the little things so much more, like a real toilet. 
solid ground underneath your feet. Still, we could not believe what had happened. The port side's days were attached by two screws to the hull and probably both of these screws broke due to material fatigue, causing the mast to break instantly. Normally, masts only break in a heavy storm or when a vessel capsizes. Just before we left, we had a professional rig inspection and thought everything is in great shape. Someone deserves a lot of good food right now. But that day we got a big and expensive lesson about the unpredictability of life. How long do you, feeling, do you think will that bottle last? I don't know. Probably for a long time. Mm. Maybe hundreds of years even. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Well, maybe not because the tape on the top... Well, I think the cabin itself is quite tight. Yeah. But I taped it with like the... Yeah, the... Yeah, it should last for at least 10 years. <laughs> maybe 20. Maybe 200. Maybe 200. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Call your number in 200 years. Yeah. And they'll yeah, just yeah. be like, what is this? Phone number? Number? <laughs> Maybe they don't even Oh, have these phones. people from the past. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Silly people. <laughs>